So a few of the guidelines, the main ones are your RAX GP, that's yep. for your normal GP guidelines. The other ones for OB guide, especially because OB guide is really tough in this exam. The questions that we went through, yeah, definitely there was about 50 to 60 percent that were repeated. First thing is, of course, basic knowledge of medicine. That should be like the first thing. So get your basics down. That's what I did for the first three months, I think. Just refresh my basics. Then definitely join a course, I would say, because it's it's so wild. So hi, we have with us Dr. Sarv Priya. Uh, he recently cleared his AMC one exam. So congratulations, Doctor. Uh, doctor, now uh, we have a lot of students who are into this process and like they're very new into new into the process and like also like some are very close to the final stages of the exam. Yeah. So uh, I would start with the most basic question and the most common question. How did you prepare for the exam? Um, so the first thing was basically going over my own knowledge from med school. Uh, the one advantage I had was I graduated a couple, just a couple of months ago. So when I started my prep, uh, I had the, the knowledge and the basic knowledge basically of the whole med school. Mm -hmm. And then I joined the academy last year, I think in March or April. And so that kind of gave me basically like a, like a timeline I have to follow. So I joined, I think I joined batch four, I believe. And so every week we would have three, three uh, lectures. So basically it kind of gave me like a structure to go on. And I followed mm -hmm. that. Uh, unfortunately, when I gave set my exam last year, I failed by one mark. I got 249 because oh, i didn't know about recalls and like how important they were but i had the knowledge with me and that was my experience the first time i gave the exam basically the knowledge was there but the way that they were asking the questions it was a lot to do with the guidelines and stuff that i remember from academy the good thing about academy was the basically the up-to-date guidelines so the second time that i gave mine in march now uh i had a group of four or five other doctors they're also from australia they're basically a similar story as me so what we did was we basically had like a group so i would recommend everyone to have a group because having uh, a group is very like important. a study buddy study group definitely yep the first time i didn't do that and i mean yeah it's one mark but it's still a fail so 249 yeah. needed 250 but yeah still a fail so the second time i had a group of four people they're all from Australia, they're uh, born and brought up here just like me. So what we were able to do then was basically use all the knowledge and notes and stuff from Academy. And we just solved uh, recalls from last six months. And now a lot of people that have tried to have a group before, what they try and do is just remember the answers. Yeah. So this was the question, just remember the answer and move on. We didn't do that because I would rather understand the answer from the guidelines. So what we did, it took a while. That's why I gave mine in March instead of Feb. So we took last from last June to this year, Feb. So we solved all of those uh, and we went through each of the questions and we went through the guidelines for the questions. So I came back to Academy. If there was a question about uh, Agoira, uh, breast imaging or anything like that. So you would go back to Academy if they have guidelines there in the notes, use that, learn about that. Put it in your document if you want and the other ones are basically rack gp rascog sa health and yeah just try and solve all the recall questions and also the one from academy the mock exams that you have uh the past exam recalls that you have those ones but mm -hmm. don't just remember the the answers try and actually understand why that's the answer I and think, that really uh, helped me yeah yep yeah, doctor i think uh the most important point that you have highlighted here is like understand the concept like yeah, understand definitely. it and grasp it from the root and not yeah. just like memorize it yeah so yeah. uh even uh, a lot of students uh, when they come up with some recalls or you know they just try to look for two or three words and then they try to memorize yeah. the answer and you know I mean, there's like, definitely there's definitely yeah. a pattern to the amc questions mm -hmm. you we noticed that when we were doing the six months recall there's definitely a pattern to them but the thing is, even the, you know how everyone says, oh, you have to do the same week recall, so those are the most important. 
I did those ones, and in my exam, actually, they were different. So there was a similar question, but they would change it up. Maybe they'll change the value. Maybe this patient has fever. The one in the recall had okay. fever, but one in the exam yeah. did not have a fever. The values are different. So you mean yeah. like uh, the point to be emphasized is the question is never the same. It might be no. the same topic, yeah. but Definitely. you would be getting like the question would be turned either ways. It can be yeah. skewed in any direction. And like again, yeah. like you said, if you don't know the concept, you won't be able yeah. to answer it, right? Yeah, I can give an example. There was a CT, there was a CT scan image in my exam. Uh, mine was actually, the answer was an abscess because my patient had a fever. But my, uh, the friend that I went to, uh, he gave the exam same time as me. His was actually um, an aneurysm. Okay. But because the patient didn't have a fever, it was a chest pain and stuff like that. So similar case, but just they changed the, the context of the question and different answer. Yeah. Okay. So now since you have like highlighted this uh, very important point about like grasping the things from the root. So tell us what kind of resources did you use? How many times did you go through the blue book, uh, the red book, the guidelines uh, particularly? When I first started, I went through the, the AMC handbook of multiple choice questions just to get okay. an idea of like what kind of questions I'm dealing with mm -hmm. because they're very different from medical school. And this is my first time giving a board exam and stuff. So I didn't actually know like how, what's the level of it. Mm -hmm. So I went through that one first, and then I basically went in hand to hand with Academy, the batch that I had. So I just followed that because I gave myself a little bit of time. I didn't want to do it in two or three months. I gave myself time to understand yeah. it and everything. Uh, and then afterwards, yeah, so Academy notes, uh, the QBanks they, that's there in the questions. Uh, also, I got a subscription for Amadex for, I think, just one month before the exam. Mm -hmm. And that's about it honestly that's all i used and the most important ones that i used were just to refresh everything guidelines guidelines Again, yeah so like, like just, uh, uh just like emphasize like uh yeah. for the guidelines like some of these students they do get where do we yeah. find guidelines for what so, topics yeah. do we need to refer to them so if you could just yeah. you know like give a elaborate uh so most of the guidelines uh if the students that are going through because the thing is the students that are joining academy they have the basic knowledge of med school mm -hmm. and most of them are working doctors back in their country and stuff so they have the knowledge to go through it yeah the only thing is like i said the guideline so academy it's a good job like in the notes you have guideline section for everything so but sometimes there's key information that's missed in and that's only given in RANSCOP or therapeutic guidelines or some other guidelines so a few of the guidelines the main ones are your rax gp that's yep. for your normal GP guidelines. The other ones for OB guide, especially because OB guide is really tough in this exam. Uh, it's SA Health, mm -hmm. uh, Ranscoke, and also NSW Women Health, something like that. So those are the main ones that are used. And for other ones, the one that when I could not find in any of those, like very peculiar guidelines. Uh, I mm -hmm. just tried to Google uh, like the topic and then guideline Australia. So anything that popped up, just go through that. If two or three different websites or guidelines are saying the same thing, you can be pretty sure that's the right guideline that you're looking at. Okay, thank you. And uh, how many questions, like you said, you did like last six months of uh, recalls? Yeah. Uh, how many, like, would you say like 50% of the topics were repeated or would you say more than that? Uh, yeah, definitely 50%, more than 50% of the topic were repeated, not the questions, but the topic themselves. Topics, yep. But in the exam, they definitely have new questions and topics at mm home. -hmm. And another thing I forgot to mention, even this was very surprising to me, even when you go through the guidelines, what AMC does sometimes is they will give you like the answer is not from the guideline. So a perfect example in my exam was the Sadman criteria. There was a question about Sadman criteria. In the recalls, they actually gave a two. So they basically asked Sadman criteria, what's the most prevalent in this? So they were asking, what's the two point from mm -hmm. the Sadman criteria? In the recalls, they gave the two pointer. But in my exam, three were one point and two was zero point. Okay. So you have to pick what's the best answer in that case. Okay. So the questions that we went through, yeah, definitely there was about 50 to 60% that were repeated, but there were definitely new questions that you, that you can just answer from common knowledge and stuff like you won't be able to study for those kind of stuff i found 
especially uh, a couple of questions I had about renal transplant. There's honestly no guideline in Australia. Yeah. I've searched and everything. Yeah. Renal transplant, post-op, and all of those cases, there's no guidelines for those. So what would be, uh, what uh, according to you, would be the average time that would be needed for the preparation for somebody like, suppose, like who's a fresh graduate, like yourself? Uh, so I would say minimum of six months if you really want to make sure you crack this mm -hmm. because because I was also working on the side part-time job, so I couldn't put my full focus on this one. And uh, I gave myself, the first exam I gave, I, I think I studied for four months proper and again, failed by one mark, so that was not that good. But the second time I wanted to make sure I get it this time. So I put, uh, I started studying again in Jan. So Jan and Feb, two months, I studied for that and gave my exam in March. So I would say definitely about six months is what you're looking at if you're like, and really prep for the six months. Okay. And uh, uh, doctor, like you said, like, unfortunately, some of the students, they are not able to clear it in the first go. Yeah. So I would like you to, you know, say something motivational for them, you know, so oh, that at least, uh, because when the results come, uh, yeah. Like everybody I know, uh, all the students, yeah, they have put in a lot of hard work, but sometimes yeah, it's just hard luck or maybe like a little yeah. bit, you know, you need to revamp your strategy. So yeah. uh, what would you tell to those students? Uh, how much time should they take before they decide on the future steps? Uh, one thing, first thing I'll say uh, when I failed uh, the first time, it's definitely not about, it's not all about the knowledge that you have. Because the way the exam is made, it's not from just textbooks. Like it's not, uh, you know, the university exams that we support, that we give. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very different. Like, so when I failed the first time, I was it was pretty low. I mean, it's expensive as well, yeah. three thousand dollars, pretty expensive. And but if if I put it in context, especially like let's say fresh graduate graduates, they're trying to pass this exam. I have a friend who's also an Australian. Uh, born and brought up here. He uh, is actually an ER doctor in uh, in the Philippines. He completed his residency. Unfortunately, even he failed the first time. Mm -hmm. So it is not about your knowledge that you have or the years of training that you have. It's a very specific exam. And the only thing I would say is you need to like, that's why I recommend recalls a lot because recalls will tell you what kind of question they actually want you to answer, what kind of knowledge they want you to have. If you have the medical knowledge, like I did, and then I went to academy and everything like that, you can do it. Yes, I came pretty close. But just to make sure that you will pass it, I will highly recommend go through the recalls that you guys, uh, the academy gives on the portal. Uh, you can find it on Telegram. Stuff. There's a lot of groups you can find it on. Just so you can get an idea of, okay, this is a type of question they will answer. Like mm -hmm. they, they will ask me in the exam. And where I will answer this question if it comes in the exam. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, if I would say like three most important things which anybody who's aspiring to clear AMC1 yeah. cannot miss, like three things they cannot go wrong about, what, what yeah. would they be? Uh, first thing is, of course, basic knowledge of medicine. You need that. If you think this exam is like, uh, the Indian exam that we give. I have a lot of Indian friends who just gave the exam as well in India. Mm -hmm. Their exam, I think, is a, a bit simpler than this because they have their biology, anatomy, and this. We don't have this in AMC yep. at all. It is all included. They'll give you one big case of 10 marks, a uh, 10 line of case, which will include your anatomy, which will include everything. Mm -hmm. So that should be like the first thing. So get your basics down. That's what I did for the first three months, I think just refresh my basics, then definitely join a course, I would say, because it's it's so wild. Yeah. Like AMC, when I first started studying for this, they don't give you any resources. The AMC handbook is about 11 years old, I think. And there's no like said study, like study material. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot to take in. Like there's no one study material like you have your, for your USMLE or your uh, pleb where you're like, okay, this is a study material, you study this, and if you study from this, you, you're most likely going to pass. AMC is not like that. So the second thing I would say is definitely a course or where you can at least get the guidelines. Yeah. The guidelines is, again, the guidelines is the main thing. 
And the third thing I would say is definitely questions, Q banks, recalls, even over Amadex and stuff, because you don't really need Amadex. I found Amadex and what Academy had in their Q banks were pretty similar. And the explanations, everything was given there already, but definitely recalls. Okay. I would say recalls definitely helped me in the second one. I was pretty sure that I'll pass it this time because when I went into the exam, it was pretty much the same topics. And I know that I went through the guidelines about two or three times. So I remember all the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you very much, Doctor. I think uh, like anybody who watches this, uh, I hope it helps them. And you've yeah. given quite a detailed and elaborate, uh, you know, structure of your study plan, the resources you refer to. So, um, or what lies ahead for you? Are you like now planning to give for uh, MC two or like still? Uh, I'm deciding. Gonna start. A, I'm gonna start. A, I'm looking for a GMO position as of now. Okay. Uh, I can also AMC part two. I'm gonna have to join a course or something again. Because like I said, Australia doesn't have like a yeah. like a study material or something like that where they give you something. No. Yeah. So yeah, definitely gonna have to join a course or something. And yeah, first just try to find a job, get into the system here. I've got a couple of cousins here who were already in medical school here, they graduated from here and then they're doing internship and stuff there. So it's a bit easier for me to get in, I understand that compared to other people. But yeah that's Arne. that's only the part forward yeah okay thank you so much doctor i wish you thank all you the very, very best in your journey ahead thank you thank you and thank good you luck much. to you